is crying when you cut an onion like so embarrassing? Literally tearing up, you guys. I just topped him with a little bit more chocolate chips. The soup is like a hug and a bowl. What's not to love? Technically, these are called blondies. I want to rebrand them to Cookie Bar. Hey everyone, I'm Chelsea. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be making a quick and easy butternut squash soup, perfect for the colder months. And we'll also be making a dessert, which is a gluten-free and vegan blondie recipe. The soup is also gluten-free and vegan, perfect for a weeknight dinner, perfect for any time. It's packed full of vegetables and nutrition. Let's make some dinner. Two peeled russet potatoes. I just cube them. The smaller you cut the potatoes, the quicker that they'll cook when you put them in the soup. I just cube them in like an inch cube. <laughs> it's probably funny that I'm just through. I obviously clean up my sink after I cook. This is real y'all, this is real cooking. I get like kind of confused when I see people do cooking tutorials and everything's so clean and so nice. Honestly doing I think like six cloves of garlic, just love garlic so much. All you YouTubers out there who make this look easy, um, can you help me? <laughs> This is probably like a full cup of carrots. I love soups because you can really chuck anything in, anything that's gonna go bad, any veggies you have in your fridge or your freezer. And nine times out of 10, it's probably gonna taste good. It's called like a, 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 a mirepoix. Mirepoix. Mirepoix, I'll put it somewhere. Is carrots, onion, and celery. That's the basis of I think every soup I've ever made. And don't hate on my knife skills. I'm crying, I'm so emotional. <laughs> I'm literally crying. Why is crying when you cut an onion like so embarrassing? I'm embarrassed. Look at this celery. This is organic celery and look at this. If you have celery not ginormous like this then use two stalks i'm just gonna use one stalk this is some good celery sometimes when you get organic produce you're like whoa this thing's insane it's like a superhero of celery one zucchini just to give the soup a bit more nutrition bulk it up a bit gordon ramsay was the one tom and i watch a lot of gordon ramsay he i think said to one of the contestants on one of his show he was always like keep one of these keep a tea towel um on your shoulder just so you can clean as you go do one can of any white bean you have so we're using great northern you can get cannellini beans those are white beans any just like neutral tasting bean I'm going to add protein and some creaminess i rave about this can opener on every video i cook in it's the best I'll link it below, of course. You can have half of a squash, butternut squash, frozen, because I roasted one and I used half for a soup like last week and now I'm doing this video. So I'll put like a link of a video down below of how to roast a squash. It's really easy. And now we're ready to make the soup. So let's go. Salt and pepper, of course, oregano, what is this? Thyme, basil, rosemary. For a bit of heat, I always put smoked paprika and cayenne pepper. You can, if you don't like heat, you don't have to put that in. And I put two bay leaves, which I'll show in the video, but make sure to take these out before you blend. You don't want to eat those. And nutritional yeast. I love nutritional yeast. This is a vegan staple.
preheat your oven to 350. This comes together in less than 10 minutes, less than five minutes. You can even make this while the soup is cooking. One third a cup of oats. I'm just gonna blend it so it becomes oat flour. Old fashioned organic oats. This is like a five in one hand blender that I got off Amazon. I will link it down below. I use this thing all the time. I'm just gonna blitz this up. Voila, oat flour. So I'm not a baker, but I do know with baking, you wanna treat your ingredients like dry ingredients and wet ingredients. We're gonna get that out of there because we wanna blend our wet ingredients in here. So that's for later. Our wet ingredients will be one can of chickpeas. I know this sounds weird for dessert, but trust me, I've made these like two or three times already and Tom loves it. I love it as well. The recipe that I linked down below doesn't have this, but I add a splash of plant-based milk. I have almond milk here. So I add like two tablespoons of this, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a third of a cup of maple syrup. I use agave, so use maple syrup. If you have it, use agave if you have it. Use sugar if you just have sugar. And our last wet ingredient is any nut butter you have on hand. I have peanut butter. If you're allergic to peanuts, use sunflower butter. And if you're allergic to sunflower butter, then I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you have on hand. But we're gonna use half a cup of this. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And again, everything's down in the description. This literally only has roasted peanuts and salt in it. Jiffy and like Skippy or whatever those peanut butters are called. Those are delicious, but the reason why they're delicious is because they have so much sugar in it. So that's all I'm saying. All of our wet ingredients, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this again. You can do this in a blender. You can do this in a food processor. So this is a smooth consistency now, and now we can add the dry ingredients. So this is our oat flour that we blended up earlier. A fourth of a teaspoon of salt, baking powder and baking soda, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. So that's going in. Put this back on and we'll blend it. Amazing. Scrape all the goodness because we want that. No waste. We just get the semi-sweet chocolate chips and we make sure there isn't dairy in it. So I like to put a half of a cup. Put more chocolate chips on top. Again, gluten-free, there's no flour in this dessert. And it's basically just made out of chickpeas. So you guys a little preview of what this tastes like, but it tastes like cookie batter. It is so delicious. My husband is like, when are you gonna make that? When are you gonna make that? And I'm like, you can make it. It's really easy. So put it in a, what is this? I think a nine by nine tray. So this is what it looks like. I'll just add more chocolate chips on the top. And if you wanna top them with like walnuts, you can top these with whatever, but I just topped them with a little bit more chocolate chips. Let's do a soup taste test. This is the butternut squash soup. Look at that gorgeous yellow color. That is one of my favorite colors during the fall. Look at this. This is homemade bread that my husband made because if you look back there, he bought a bread maker off of Amazon <laughs> and he's been making bread <laughs> like every day. It is heaven. So here's my homemade soup with Tom's homemade bread. And I've already had this bread. It is so good. All that's in here is salt, yeast, and flour. That's it. And water. I already know this is going to be delicioso. Dunkaroo. Dunkaroo the bread. I've made this recipe dozens of times, the soup recipe. It never gets old. Squash when it's in season is the best. Comment down below if you want Tom and I to do a video about the bread maker. It's amazing. It makes a fresh loaf of bread within hours. And you don't have to do anything. You just put the ingredients in and you walk away. Uh, what? It's like a hug and a bowl. Blank it's like a blanket for your stomach. <laughs> what? Soup and bread? 
what you can't beat it you have to make this for your loved ones for your family for your partner for yourself this is just this just makes this meal just makes me feel at home cozy it just makes me happy and i hope this makes you happy too and guess what we still have dessert to eat i will see you guys for a dessert taste test I just check these out of the oven look how good they look you'll want to let them cool for like at least 30 minutes let these cool so they kind of can set and then we can taste test all right friends it is dessert time with my <laughs> dirty napkin that crunchy a little bit i love the crunchy parts of dessert the corners it's my favorite look at her you got these little crunchy corners it's just made out of chickpeas y'all chickpeas and some oats i already know what this tastes like because i've made it like three times in the past two weeks cheers friends well i mean what's not to love this tastes like a like a cookie bar technically these are called blondies i want to rebrand them to cookie bar we did it we made dinner we made dessert make this for your family make this for your kids i don't know if kids maybe you have kids nephews nieces trying to get them off refined sugar trying to have them eat i don't know less like flour and less butter make this dessert they won't even know the difference and make that soup they won't even know there's vegetables in that this is how i eat i love it i'm i love the food that i eat maybe i can make this is a series called like dinner and dessert that'd be kind of cute uh comment down below if what kind of vegan recipes you want if you want like breakfast ideas lunch and dinner ideas more dessert recipes and i will see you on the internet next week bye